Shalom, everyone, to Living with the Times. This week's Torah portion is Bahar, and it begins that God speaks to Moshe Bahar Sinai at Mount Sinai and tells him to instruct the people about the seventh year, the sabbatical year, when we give the land its rest. And after six years of working, we rest. And so everyone asks the classic question, weren't all of the mitzvahs given at Har Sinai? Why does this Torah portion have to begin by saying that God spoke to Moshe at Mount Sinai. So Rashi asks the question. All the commentators ask the question. And Rashi answers that this Torah portion is very unique in that the whole portion is really dealing with one group of mitzvot surrounding the seventh sabbatical year and the 50th Yovel year, meaning that we count seven times seven years, and the 50th year is the Yovel year, the Jubilee year, a special year of freedom for the people, where land reverts to the original owners, debts are canceled, just like in the Shemitah year, and indentured servants go free and so it's a very very special year and so there's no other Torah portion that takes a whole portion to describe one body of mitzvah based around Shemitah so that's what Rashi says Rashi says just like this Torah portion deals with the general idea and the details and even the exact details of this one body of mitzvot, so too all of the mitzvot that were given at Har Sinai were given in a similar way. When we read the other Torah portions, we see that uh, it's, it's very short, exact, and it, it doesn't necessarily give all of the details. But all the details were given in the oral tradition. So that's what Rashi says. This is what's called the pshat, the literal meaning. That's how Rashi answers the question, why does this Torah portion have to say that it was given at Mount Sinai? All of the mitzvah were given at Mount Sinai. So that's Rashi's answer, the literal, straightforward answer. Now, according to the the organizational way of learning called pardes, where we look at a verse according to its uh, pshat, its literal meaning, its remez, its hinted to or alluded meaning, its drusha, its homiletic, uh, allegorical, metaphorical, symbolic meaning, and its sod, its mystical, inner dimension of the Torah meaning. And those four uh, letters in Hebrew, Pe, Resh, Dalet, and Samach, spell out Pardes, which means an orchard. And so we've discussed Rashi's explanation of the Pshat. So let's look at the Remez. What is alluded to here that there's some connection between the sabbatical year and Mount Sinai? Well, here it's a very, very clear uh, numerical illusion that just like Shemitah is based on seven years, and then we count seven times seven years, and the 50th year is Yovel year, the Jubilee year. It's the same uh, model that we receive the Torah on Mount Sinai. We count seven times seven weeks. And the 50th day is the day that the Torah was given at Mount Sinai, the holiday of Shavuot. So this is the remez that why this Torah portion begins by God saying from Mount Sinai, he gave these mitzvot. 
because the model of how we receive the Torah after seven times seven weeks on the 50th day is very similar and corresponds to seven times seven years and the 50th year. In the, in the realm of drusha, metaphor, symbolism, allegory. So there's two ways we can understand this. One is that when we came to Mount Sinai, it says the Yichan Yisrael Neged Ahar, that Israel camped across from the mountain, the mountain being Har Sinai. And Rashi points out that the word they camped is actually written in the similar, in the singular, Vayichan. So yes, why is it written in the singular when you're talking about the whole people? So he says that we came to Mount Sinai, Ke'ishachad Belevachad, like one person with one heart. And so this has a connection to Shemitah, because what happens in the sabbatical year, not only do we not work the fields, but all of the produce in the land becomes what's called hefker, ownerless. And we it's a very different idea than Western idea of ownership. Every seventh year, our fields, our orchards, our gardens become ownerless, and they could be shared by everyone. So this is an experience of like one person with one heart. The whole land becomes open for everyone. So that's one way to understand the connection between the experience of Mount Sinai and the experience of Shemitah. Another way we could look at this is the idea of emuna or faith. When we receive the Torah at Mount Sinai, we said, Na'aseh the Nishma, we will do and we will hear. This is called the statement, the epitome of uh, accepting God's uh, commandments, the epitome of free will that we're accepting God's will. We'll do, even if we don't understand initially, We'll do the mitzvahs, and then hopefully we'll come to understand. So this takes tremendous faith. We didn't know what would be in the, in, the, in the Torah. It was as if we were saying, God, we trust you so much that whatever you command us, whatever you ask of us, we will do. That takes tremendous faith. And the same thing with observing the Shemitah year. We have to remember in ancient times, this is before modern transportation, modern agriculture, modern communication. So if you if your crops fail or in the Shemitah year, you don't plant, well, you can't just go to a supermarket and get produce that's shipped in from Europe or Asia or South America. It, it, it was a different reality. So it took tremendous faith to observe the sabbatical year. And we're actually told that, though many of the people, of course, did keep the Shemitah year, but as far as the entire people, we never totally kept the seventh sabbatical year because it, it, it takes so much faith. Now, it's certainly not impossible that just like we prepare for Shabbat, people could prepare a whole year in advance and uh, prepare all the different foods that could be stored. And you're, we're allowed to eat the fruit of Shemitah. We just can't plant. And so it's, it's, it's very possible, but it did take a lot of faith. So here again, we see a very deep connection between the faith exhibited at Mount Sinai and the faith to keep the sabbatical year. The last level of Sod, the more mystical level, is that we know that when we receive the Torah at Sinai, we're told that the experience 
was that the seven heavens opened up, all of our senses crossed what's called synesthesia. We could see what could ordinarily only be heard. And we're told that each word that God said, our souls left our bodies. And God had to send angels to revive the people. So it was a mystical experience, a once-in-history revelation of God that was so powerful that all of the dimensions opened up and we had this uh, once-in-a-history revelation of God's light. And so that experience is obviously very hard to reproduce. But let's think for just a second about what it's like to rest the fields a whole year. We're talking in ancient times, Israel was an agrarian society. There were some cities, but the vast majority of people lived on the land. And so after working the land for six years, and then seventh year is like Shabbat. That's why it's actually called, it's called a Shabbat for the land. And so we have the experience of a 24-hour Shabbat. We have Pesach and Sukkot, where we have a whole week of holiday, even though under certain circumstances a person can do work. But many people rest the whole time and don't work. But what about a whole year of being freed from very hard physical work? Agricultural work is, is very, very difficult. And so here the people, after six years of work, were free to have a whole different experience. Not a day and not a week, but a whole year of rest. And we're told that one of the main objectives is that people would have a chance to renew themselves and to learn Torah. And so this is an experience that we, we actually don't have that experience. The closest thing we have is what's called the, a sabbatical, a, whether it's a, a professor or it could be in, in, in a different type of work situation where they work for six years and the seventh year they have a sabbatical. Doesn't mean that they don't work, but they're freed from their usual routine of teaching and they can do research and write. And many, many people take a sabbatical from work. They get permission and they return and they come back to work. But here we're talking about in the context of everyone resting. It's a Shabbat. So we have to imagine that this is, this is a, a very spiritual experience that not working the land opens up a whole different way of looking at the world, a whole different soul experience, and really... Uh, can lead to great renewal. And so here we've gone through four different levels of understanding why this particular portion is called Bahar. And God reveals to Moshe, at Har Sinai, these laws of Shemitah. And so may we always delve into the Torah according to Pardes, and it should reveal great and innovative ideas to all of us.